right then. Next up, we have Akila Pereira, a third year software engineering undergraduate at Slit, who is working as a software engineering intern at Tepic Lanka. She will be taking us through a comprehensive briefing on documentation knowledge. So over to you, Akila. Thank you, Zidmi. Uh, let me share my screen. Is it visible, Jitni? Yes, it's visible. Thank you. Uh, so today I will be covering the topic documentation in ITP. The content I will be covering is uh, so you can see as about assessments, activities, diagrams, report formatting and tips and tricks. So all of these things are related to documents. So yes, hang on tight with this session. To get to know everything about that you need to know uh, with regards to this documentation part in ITP. As you can see, these are the assignments and activities that you can find during your IT project. The first is the project charter. So I'm going to focus on the rest of the points as you guys, I, I guess, uh, I assume that you guys have already submitted your project uh, charter by now because I guess today is your deadline. Um, so if you haven't submitted it yet, make sure that you submit it on time and to like give a brief uh, introduction about this brief, uh, brief description about this project charter. Uh, you have given a template for this actually. So you have to fill the necessary details about your project in this template. Uh, and like as Sire mentioned in the very first session, you have eight members in your groups. That means you have one function per each member. There are eight functions altogether. You have to explain these eight functions briefly in this project charter. So that's how the lecturers and instructors can get a better idea about your project. Your project can either be approved or rejected based on this as well. So be careful with that. And also you can receive feedback from your lecturers after submitting this particular document. Uh, there will be like sessions. Uh, there will be um, like sessions, discussion sessions uh, for you to get feedback from the lecturers and in instructors during lab sessions and even lectures. So attend those sessions daily, that means uh, regularly, because uh, before going to the project proposal, you have to correct your mistakes and make your project, make the necessary changes to your project based on the feedback, feedback given to you. So make sure you attend them regularly. That is my first advice to you all. And then we are actually moving to the project proposal. Now you have corrected your, correct your mistakes and now we are done with that part. Uh, then you are moving to the project proposal. So what is this project proposal? This is actually the first assessment you will be given. Why I call this an assessment is because there will be marks allocated to this particular document. So this project proposal part contains of the document itself and the presentation and viva. Uh, you will be given like in almost all the documents that you need to submit, you will be given some particular set of guidelines that you need to follow before submitting it. You need to follow these guidelines when preparing these documents. So keep that in mind and if you like there will also be a marking scheme in most of the documents as well. Uh, so that's how it was in our semester. I hope that's the same for you as well. So I took this screenshot from your uh, from the document that was shared to you during your awareness session, if you can remember. So I guess this is the marking scheme for your semester as well. We had this too, so there won't be like any large differences, but there might be slight differences with regarding to marking schemes and all guidelines and all. Uh, so keep an eye of, open for that. Uh, stay aware about all those things. So back to the project proposal part, there will be a document that you need to submit and also there will be a presentation plus viva. That means you will have to present your project proposal in front of the lecturer and the instructor. 
and also their survival session as well. You will be asked questions based on your particular part of the project. That means the function that you need to work on. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, like only the leader knowing everything won't help you in this case because you will have to individually explain your function to le the lecturer itself. And that is one point to keep in mind. The next is actually I told you guys that there will be a marking scheme or something like that in these guideline documents. So there will be points mentioned in this guide, guideline, uh, guideline document that you will need to in, incorporate in your particular document or anything that you do. If they have asked you to include particular things in your presentations and proposals, then you will have to include them to gain marks. So keep that in mind. That is all about the project proposal. Next, we actually have the progress review part. So if you if you have a look at this slide, uh, after the progress document, I have mentioned a point like activities, named activities. So what are these activities? Before going to the progress document, let me uh, let me briefly tell what these activities are actually. These activities, even though I have mentioned after the pro project proposal and document part, these activities span across your whole semester. That means you do not have one particular point to get these activities or to submit these activities. You will be getting most probably like four to five activities per semester, like one or one activity per week or two weeks likewise. So these activities span across the whole semester. I will be uh, giving you a introduction to these activities in future slides. Uh, so before that, I'm going to get finished with this progress review part. After the project proposal is submitted, uh, after like eight weeks, right? That means after the mid exams, typically after the mid exams, you will be uh, you will have to face this progress review part. Can you see that there will be uh, it is also an assessment. Uh, you will be given 35 percent of your final mark for this part, and these marks are given uh, according to three criteria. The presentation plus viva, obviously the progress document and 80 percent completed prototype demonstration. So what is this 80% completed prototype? That means you have to complete your project by 80%, exactly by 80% by this time. So you have like over eight to nine weeks to do that. So you will be able to do that if you work on time on your project. And keep in mind, you will only get marks if you have completed 80% of your project by this time. And this 80%, in order to know what you have to complete uh, to get better marks, you will have to communicate well with lecturers. So as I told you guys, attend lab sessions and lectures regularly. Also, this presentation and viva part, actually it you need to include some of the screenshots of your 80% work in prototype, not your Figma designs. That means you have to include uh, your screenshots of your UI user interface so make sure that happens and also if you can remember i told you that there will be some particular marking scheme in each document in each guideline document so this is the marking scheme that we were given back then for our progress review part this is an example of it so uh, can you see that there are sections this marking scheme is actually divided into several sections and marks are given accordingly even this section is divided into some particular points i told you that you will have to follow these points in order to gain marks so make sure that happens because as you can see, obviously these things are marked. Even if they are not marked, you don't know what will happen with these documents. So try to follow these guidelines very clearly and properly. OK, that is one of the biggest advice I would like to give you guys. After the progress, not after actually, I told you that there will be activities spanning across the whole semester. Not after the project proposal, not after the progress review, but this spans across the whole semester from start to end. 
you might get an activity before you submit the project proposal. So that might happen. It happened with uh, in our semester. So that might happen in your semester as well. So these activities are actually some of the uh, activities we got are requirements, engineering activity, agile activity, design activity. So all most of these topics were covered in the previous sessions as well. But I would like to like take you over the main diagrams mentioned here. And but remember. Uh, these diagrams actually this is not a lecture session, so uh, as there are time restrictions, I can't like remind you each and everything about these diagrams. So what you have to do is go back to your lecture, go back to the previous semesters and study these diagrams once again because you will need that in near in the near future. And also. I have mentioned a very good point at the end of this slide. These, these activities are not marked. Can you see it? So why would you do these activities if they are not marked? Um, one reminder again, uh, they were not marked in our semester. So again, it will change. It, it might uh, change in your semester. So stay focused on that. If they are actually not marked, then what's the point of having these activities? If I take you to the next slide, can you see this? Is the, this is part of the guideline document you will be getting for your final report. There are several chapters. Can you see that there? This in this chapter three, there's this part called design and development. That means it should include some sort of diagrams of components and more. That means you will have to include like mostly all of the diagrams that were given in the activities in the final report as well. That is the importance of doing these activities regularly. Why? Because submitting the final report means you guys have gone to the end of the semester. That means you are heading towards your final examinations as well. You are very busy at this time and you are, you are exhausted uh, because you have done so much coding with this project. And some of you might have things left to do to make your project uh, like very successful as well. So some tasks might be left uh, for the end of the semester. So you are exhausted and you are very busy with other things by this time. Just imagine if you were to draw these diagrams all at once in this final week, what would happen? You will get more exhausted. So it is going to be a very uh, like very tedious task. So the importance of having these, doing these activities actually, not just having these activities, doing these activities means you can just use the same diagrams that you submitted before and then include them in the final report. That would save a lot of time and a lot of work for you guys. So keep that in mind, even though they are not marked, remember, these are very important when it comes to your final report as well because you need to make sure that the final report looks good and you have a clean report by the end of the semester. So yes, it is very essential to do these activities on time and also keep in mind somehow you need to submit these activities. There will be a link open for you guys to submit the activities. So keep that in mind so we don't know whether they will be marked or not. Even though they are not marked, it is very crucial for you to do these activities regularly when they are given. So that is the importance of these activities. I told you that I will be taking you over some of the diagrams given in these activities. Uh, so when you come to the diagrams, actually, if you can remember, there are two main types of diagrams, behavioral diagrams and structural diagrams. So what are these behavioral diagrams? They show us how a system behaves or interacts. And the structural diagrams, of course, depicts the structure of a system. That's it, that, that is the main thing you need to know about these two types. And if I were to take you to this use case diagram, actually, this is one example of the behavioral diagrams. Can you see it shows the behavior or the interactions between an actor and the system? For example, if you take a look at the tour guide, this is an actor. So how uh, the tour guide interacts with the system is by this use case, group checking. 
there's a relationship between these two that is called association and there's a relationship between the actors as well that is called generalization that means yeah the child actor inherit the properties of the parent actor and also there are a relationship between use cases as well what is this include relationship that means we call this the base use case the group check-in one the base use case and the other one the included use case so that means uh, when the base use case happen at the same time the individual check-in also happens this individual check-in part or the included one cannot stand alone and what are the what is this extend relationship that means uh, there there is a certain if condition that need to be met for that to happen likewise there are several uh, like there are several things you need to revise when it comes to use case diagrams the next one is activity diagram. This is a very simple activity diagram. Uh, they are okay. so there's a initial no, a initial state and the final state. That means this shows how the control flows in a system from one point to another. How control flows? Now these are called actions. There are branches and there are decision nodes. That means it it's just like the if else conditions you find in coding. So you have guard conditions. If some, if uh, this condition is met, then you are going to th go through this, go through this branch. So likewise, this is what an activity diagram depicts. It depicts the flow of control in a system, the behavior, some sort of a behavior in the system. The next is a swim lane diagram. So this is there's a slight difference between like it shows how these customers, rece receptionists, and all those th people. Oh, I'd like to call them entities interact with uh, this particular system, how these interactions happen. It is associated with the, with the activity diagram as well. So this is partition. We call this a swim lane. And OK, another concept here we can find here is forks and joints. That means forks means everything below this happens either parallelly or the order is unknown. In, that, in those cases, we actually use forks to depict those kind of flows. And also we need to merge them, merge these branches together. To do that, we use joints. So yes, those are the like very basic concepts that you need to remember when it comes to activity diagram. The next is the sequence diagram. So it shows how objects interact with each other. These are what we call objects. Uh, so how messages are sent between these objects and how responses are made. So all these things you can find in the sequence diagram. Next, we have the class diagram actually. The class diagram is a structural diagram. If you can remember, that means it shows the structure of a system by modeling its classes. This is a class. Book is a class. That is the class name and the attributes and uh, the attributes and methods can be depicted in the in this diagram itself and also there are several kind of relationships between each of these classes or the objects created by these classes uh, so we call them like some of the examples are generalization aggregation composition association and dependency so make sure that you go back to those lectures those particular lectures and read the lecture slides and oh do whatever it takes to make you remember those things. Uh, so if I were to tell you in which semesters these were taught, actually, I, as far as I can remember, it was the first year, second semester and uh, year one. Of, yes, sorry, second year, first semester modules. So go back to those lessons and try remembering these things. The next one, actually, after now, yes, you have finished your activities. Uh, now you come to the final report part. Can you see this? This holds 45% of your final mark, the largest uh, score that you could get in this ITP project. Not just the report, actually. You will be given this mark based on this two criteria presentation plus viva and product demonstration and the final report 
for this report, of course, you will be given a report structure, most probably, because we were given one back in nowadays. Uh, so uh, in this report structure, you will be given everything you need to follow when coming up with this final report. So you do not have to go back and forth between articles, web articles or Google and every other thing to get the report structure. It will be much easier for you guys to follow this uh, structure given in the guideline document. And also there will be a present uh, presentation plus five and product demonstration. Uh, so this pr product demonstration you have to complete your project 100% by this time. Uh, if you can remember in the previous sessions, uh, the speakers shared how this product should be completed. Like you need to get this, get everything integrated by the end as well. So keep that in mind. Otherwise it is going to be a whole lot of mess. So make sure that you integrate your project as well. This is the report structure. I was talking about. Sorry, guys. I guess, can you see my screen? Yes, we can again. Okay. I hope my screen is visible. Yes, Akila, you can see. OK, thank you. So sorry for the interruption. And uh, the final report part, this was the report structure I was talking about. Uh, now, now we come to the Next part of the say, uh, session, test cases. So this might be a new word for some of you guys, but uh, if you can remember, I guess you might not remember actually, but you will find this word in the guideline document that will be given for your final report. You will have to include test cases in this document. So what are these test cases? If you have a Look at the below example. When some kind of action is performed, there will be inputs in uh, taken into the system as well. So if when this action is performed, you need to get some sort of an output out of the system. So this is what we call the expected output. But there's also this actual output. Now you expect the output to be this and you get this actual output as the output. If these two, uh, two things does not match, if the actual output is not similar to the expected output, then your test case is considered as failed one. If not, if these are similar, then you consider this to be a past test case. So this is a very, uh, common example of a test case. So you can find tons of these things in the web. So go through the go through Google. And uh, you will be able to find these things very easily. Next, after the test cases, we actually come to this part, report formatting. Now, this is also a part of the document that we that was given to us back then when we were coming up with the report, final report. Uh, this was actually mentioned in the final report, but as you can see, this is all about report formatting. This is general, uh, there's this point, general formatting. So this is, these are very general rules. When, when it comes to documents, you need to follow these rules to get a, but, uh, get a better document. So key, try following these things from the very beginning. Even though you do get these uh, 
at the end of the semester. That does not mean you have restrictions to follow these things because you can find these things almost everywhere. So try incorporating, applying these formatting rules in your documents from the very beginning itself. Because when it when it comes to the final day report, it will be a great practice for you. By then, if you have incorporated these rules in the from the very beginning itself. So try like if you want a screenshot or something, you can take this as well. But anyway, you can find this thing all over the Internet. So I don't think it is necessary to have a screenshot or something. But if you want, you can take also you can find this in the web, web as well. So this is also the continuation of this report formatting thing you will be getting most probably you will be getting these things as well as i told you this these were taken from our semester so it might slightly differ in your semester so always have a look at like for keep your focus on course uh, like read the notices as well and uh, go through code like Log into CourseWeb every every day or something like that because you need to stay updated about these things. That is one key point you need to follow when uh, doing these projects and also keep that in mind as well. And now, yes, we have come to the end of my session. Uh, so tips and tricks. What is this about actually? The, these are the these are the these are some of the tips and tricks. I uh, like. That come comes in like come into my mind when it comes to doing presentations. Uh, the first one is actually be confident. Why is it important? Because confidence is all you need when you're presenting some things to an audience. And to help this, you can like use the below two methods. Do not read the slides or do not memorize. Why? If you were to memorize each and everything that you need to say during a presentation, then it is going to end up with a mess. For some, it might work, but most of the time, if you just assume you forget even a one sentence, then what will happen is you will forget everything that you need to say. You will be like, you will panic at the moment. Panicking is not a solution when doing a presentation and panicking is not a solution. So avoid these things. Avoid these things to avoid panicking and, you know, losing confidence and all those things. Avoid these things. And also one way to present without having to memorize or read in the slides is having short sentences in the slides. And also make sure that you include some keywords or sentences, key sentences in your presentation slides so that when you have a look at them, you can actually remember what you need to say. So make sure that you include such things in your presentation and, you know, keep it simple. Uh, so those are the tips and tricks that come into my mind. But if you have more tips and tricks, Obviously, you have you will have more. So if you have those things with you, make sure that you share them with your batchmates and even your project mates. So you need to help one another during this time period, during this academic journey. So make sure that you do that and excel well in your projects. Help others do the same thing. Uh, so yes, I hope you will do great in your projects. And yes, all the best to you all. Thank you.